Hey everybody, how y'all doing? It's Stacy, and um, I'm getting ready to do y'all another stained glass video. Um, last time we did, the first time we did patterns, the second time we did cutting, and this time we're gonna do grinding. And I didn't clean this up ahead of time, but I should have. Um, now, I have put water in here, and uh, I used to still water in mine. I read somewhere that you're supposed to. Um, this is just leftover glass. I filled it up a little high because it's leaking all over the table, but that's okay. This is what you get. Just plain old distilled water from, like, Walmart. It's really cheap. And um, this has a little sponge here. You want to have that wet. It, mine wasn't, doesn't really come in contact with it. But I put water, you pour the water in here, and this thing comes off. Um, and every now and then, you need to, I'm not going to take it off because it's really hard, kind of hard to do, but there's a little trough in there, and that's what you fill up with water. And every now and then, you need to take this little, there's a little groove over here, and you can lift this plate off. You take the plate off and scoop all that out because that groove down that trough fills with little bitty, powdery glass particles and it'll fill up where no water will come in so you need to every now and then clean all of that out but you need to have enough water to fill up the trough and this needs to get wet and then whether if your sponge doesn't touch it you know um i still get the sponge wet and i just make sure that this is wet now real quick i'm changing these bits out um every so often it'll get to where it doesn't grind very well when that happens, you get this little Allen wrench thing here. See that? And you put that in here. See this little hole? There's a little hole there. And you put this in that way where the little leg part sticks out because you got to have something to turn it. And that's how you loosen and tighten that. Now, when you take this off, you'll have just that little prong sticking up. You may want to put a little Vaseline or something around that prong because that makes the bit easier to get off and on. Sometimes they will stick and they're really hard to get off. So you might want to think about doing that. I, I do it sometimes just a little bit, not very much. You know, you don't have to do much. But that's how you uh, replace these if you need to. You put this in the hole and loosey to loosey, let's see, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So you go left to loosen it and right to tighten it. All right, and that's how you replace those. And if it gets to where it's not grinding very well, you need to do that. Now, this is a Graffette diamond grinder. Um, I think it cost me about $200. I said in the other video, um, of all the tools that you can have and the expense that everything is, this is a must-have as far as I'm concerned. I tried using nothing, which was terrible. None of my pieces fit together. It was impossible to solder. There were big gaps. It was just a nightmare cannot be done with no grinder. Um, then I use one of those, I think they call them Carbonero. It starts with a C. Anyway, it doesn't matter because they don't work either. But they're stones and they're long um, like this and about that wide and they're little stones and you do like this. Well, the problem with that is you will miss and you will run your hand along the side of that glass. I promise you it will happen. You will cut the absolute shit out of yourself. Trust me, don't do it. Just don't even waste your money. Don't waste your time. They don't work. And even if you don't cut yourself, let's just say, you will spend hours, because I did, grinding with one of those things. They're so ineffective that you'll spend forever. Now, this will get it done. And this one is smaller. Uh, my friends that own Glass Castles, the glass shop here, they have a bigger one. It's wonderful. I'd love to have one, but I don't have $1,000 to shell out. So, I have this one. And I think I got it on Amazon, but I might have gotten it from the Griffin, um, you know, place. Either way, um, I think it's something that you must have um, of all the things. That, and like I said yesterday, you need to have a good soldering iron. Um, we'll talk about that more next time when we're soldering. Anyway, for grinding, um, what you're going to end up with at the end of, you know, where we left off, you should have all your pieces cut out. So that's what I have. See right here? I don't know if you can see, but there's all my pieces. And I've got them all cut out. And uh, I want to be sure you can see the grinder good. Um, so if you look at these pieces, see, look at this one, for instance. You'll see my line, the black line that I drew there, and that little bit of glass that's overhanging. 
that's what we're going to grind off. See this little circle part right here? Let me be sure y'all can see. See those, see that black line? And then see that little bit of glass hanging over? That's what we're going to grind off. See right here? Let me get my finger where it needs to be. Right there. See that? There's a little bit of glass hanging over there. Now, on these edges that don't have glass hanging over, see like that one? I cut that one pretty good. There's not, um, you don't see the line. You're still going to run this along the grinder because there's small pieces, shards, that you can't really see. So, I run everything through the grinder. Just on that part, you're not going to dwell. Now, if you get to a place where there's more, like right here, there's a little more than over here. You're gonna run along here just kind of smoothly, and when you get to that part, you're gonna kind of slow down and lean into it. Now, you do not have to push really hard, okay? That would be bad, don't do that. Just make contact, and you'll kind of be able to tell. Okay, we're gonna do a piece. Now, it's loud, so I'm not gonna talk, or I'm gonna try not to talk. I, I kind of have a hard time not talking, so I may talk, but I'm gonna try not to. Um, I want you to see how it works. Okay, I'm gonna move this over there. Now it's got a little switch on it. Now it's gonna be loud, but just um, bear with me. I want you to see how this works. I want you to get a good look at this piece before we grind it, especially this area here in this curve and this along this line. See the black line there where, I'm, where I didn't cut enough and it's thicker right over here. And then there's this edge here. Now I want you to see what it looks like when we grind it, okay? Watch. See, it's not that loud. Okay. Now, look on the grind thing to the part that's darker. That's where the bit is not as warm. Okay? So, you just kind of go back and forth. See, you don't see anymore. I'm gonna get it where you can see. You don't see that black line there anymore. Now wear your safety glasses when you do this, okay? I forgot to mention that, but you need safety glasses. Peace, you may not think it's gonna happen, but little shards fly up from this all the time and they will get in your eye. Let's do this part and y'all can watch how to do this. Okay, just kinda start at the edge and move kind of consistently. You don't want to stop. You want to just keep evenly moving along. If you feel a lump, then go back over that area. Like right there, there was a lump. If you have a crevice, and in this kind of glass it seems to happen, what's happened right here, I don't think you can see it, but a little chink has come out going that way. Okay? It's chunked out over the top. And you can't really do anything about it except smooth into it. Like grind on the sides of it so it doesn't, so it's more natural. Weaving into it. That's all you can really do. Now this edge that doesn't have a lot that needs to come off, I'm just going to go like this. See that? Just go like that and, and then still shards will come off. Now I want you to look at how much different it looks. Alright, here's the gap. Okay, see there's no black and see how smooth it is? And see that was that rough, nasty edge with the black 
marker on it. See how smooth it is? The piece looks good now. All right. Now, oh, I didn't do that little edge. Okay. Now, I got that really smooth. Um, let's do one of these. This is a bad one, so we'll do it. See? I'm going to get it where y'all can see. It's funny. When I think it's in front of the camera, it's not. All right. Can you see the black uh, on this purple? It's hard to see. But you can see that pointy edge that should be a circle. Should be um, conve convex. This edge right here. See that little point on it? We want to get that off. Okay. So, let's do this. Okay, now I see black, so I'm going to get the black off. And there's a little hump right there. I'm going to get rid of that. Alright. Now look at it. I'm going to get it there. See? All those little nicks and the humps and all that, they're gone. Okay, see, it just takes a second to do it, and um, and then you're done. And when you're done, then you want to wash your pieces real good. You don't necessarily need to use soap. Just I just put some warm water, and then especially dry them real good when you get done. Before you start messing with your foil and stuff, you want to do that. Now, there's something else I want to show y'all real quick that goes back to pattern stuff. But, um, I was doing this today, making this pattern, and I thought I need to show you the math. Um, if you're doing a pattern and you want to use these bevels, like, say, this size, they're a little square, two by twos. Um, alright, see this pattern? I don't know if y'all can see. Alright. See on the corner, see it says bevel? Um, I wanted bevels to be in the corner of this pattern. Now, the way I like to do it is I start, when I start to draw the pattern, before I do anything else, I put this little bevel up in the corner and draw around it. And then I draw my lines, these lines right here that go to and from the bevel in between. See that? It goes to the other corner and there's another bevel. Then I draw those lines. That way, from the get-go, what do y'all think of my pattern? Can you see it? Yeah, there it is. I'm putting a bevel in the middle, and then, yeah. I think it's pretty. Anyway, that way, um, you get your bevels set aside their space, and then also the space in between. And it's going to be the right thickness, and it'll be the right, you know, dimension. So, it's a good idea if you're going to use bevels in the sides or the corners, Draw them in your pattern first, and then draw everything else around them. Okay, that works best. Um, now, as far as grinding goes, uh, other than keeping water in your grinder and keeping your sponge wet and your bit wet, and I showed you how to change the bits, um, there's not just a whole lot you need to remember. The water is really important. You will ruin it if you don't keep water in it. That's really important. Um, other than that... I get now. I can see y'all. Other than that, there's not just a whole lot that to grinding. Um, you will get a rhythm down. You want to try to be um, rhythmic about it and smooth and even, and don't stop unless you're over a hump that you're trying to grind down. So where we are now um, is I keep the pieces. That's another thing. Um, these are all the little pieces that I used. Whoops. These are the pieces I use to cut my pieces out, okay, the pattern pieces. I keep those until I'm done with a piece because now, there are a lot of times where when you're working on one, especially going to the sink, leaving the sink and doing the foiling, where you will drop one and have to recut it. Or maybe you get one and it breaks while you're grinding or whatever. It's good to keep those pieces until you're done because if you have to cut another one out, it's a lot easier if you have the pattern piece still there. Otherwise, you have to go back to this, trace it over, and make a whole new pattern piece. You don't want to have to do that. It's a big waste of time. 
Okay, so where we are now is we have all these pieces that need to be ground and we have our template still here, okay? For those of you that didn't see the other videos, this is the template right here. This is what we're making. This goes in the center and uh, the glass is this color on those little parts there and then it's this pretty pinky goldy um, for these parts here and it's purple and it's clear and it's that swirl color again around here anyway just so you know um, we have this when we get done with our grinding we will place all those pieces on the template and just be sure they all fit well because grinding isn't just about removing your pin marks that's a start but then you need to put them on your pattern and be sure that they fit right um, because it's possible that you might have drawn something wrong or you know messed up in some other way so before you foil them you want to be sure they fit right on here so after you grind them all make sure they fit on here then you wash them then you're ready for foiling okay i don't think i've left anything out um Another reason that it's good to have these pieces numbered is that makes that real easy when you're fitting them back on here. You don't have to have the numbers. In fact, they may come off when you're washing. If they do, it's okay. You should be able to fit them on there. They should be close enough. You know, I mean, they should fit. So you shouldn't have a problem with that if they come off during washing. Um, I, I Sometimes if it's a complicated piece, I'll try to keep from washing them off. But anyway, uh, you can do without it. But where we are now is we've got our pieces. I'm going to grind them, and then I'm going to fit them onto here to where they all fit nicely. And that means you have to go back to the grinder some is what I've been trying to explain. Um, it's not enough just to get these. See that black line? I want that gone. I'm going to get that gone right now. But then I'm going to fit them all onto this template, and there may still be problems. And if there are, then it's, it's not uncommon for that to happen that it's not enough just to get the black lines off, that something doesn't fit right even after you've done that. And if that's the case, then you go back to the grinder and you fix it. And then um, at that point, you wash, dry, real good, and then you'll be ready for the foiling part. And that's gonna be our next video. We're gonna do copper foiling next time and burnishing, which is where you um, take your FID, which I'll show you. It's a little instrument, a plastic thing that you use to rub the copper foil onto the piece that secures it. You know, uh, copper foil has a sticky side and a non-sticky side, and you, of course, put the sticky side on the glass, and then you use the FID to rub that in so it sticks real good. And we'll go over that next time. But anyway, um, I've, got, um, I've got everything ready. I want to show y'all one last thing. I'm going to get you off of here. Uh, that pattern I just showed you is right here. And look at this beautiful glass I've got. That green and blue. Isn't that gorgeous? And there's all three of my cats. You see my, can you see my cats? I don't know if y'all can see them or not. There's my cats. Alright, thank y'all for joining me. I appreciate you being here. And if you hadn't checked out the other videos, check them out. Um, they will get you caught back up. And I put my email address on uh, each one of these videos. So if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to email me. I am totally available for questions or comments. If you're stuck somewhere on any stage or any part of this, you know, please don't hesitate because I love teaching. I love helping people and I'm totally available. You know, if you email me then we can talk on the phone after that and that is essential at some point if you're teaching yourself at some point you're going to want to talk to somebody because i've done it and i did and i had people to talk to so i will be there for you if you get to a place where you just need to ask a question and have a discussion you know i'm here and i'm totally totally willing and able to do that so just email me and say hey i'm stuck i need help and I'll give you my phone number, and then we'll go from there. We'll get it worked out. You can do this. You can do this on your own. I did. And then if you want to see some of my work, so you know I'm not just talking out my ass, my videos, uh, the very first stained glass videos I did, like, I don't know, a year ago, I showed a bunch of my pieces. Um, this time, well, it's upside down, but there's a wave that I did. Um, the rest of them are put up. 
Um, but if you want to see some of my work, don't hesitate to look back at those because um, I show a whole bunch of different stuff in those um, uh, in those early videos. I think the very first one. So y'all tune in next time. We'll we'll get to our copper foiling and we'll get this piece made and have a lot of fun. I appreciate y'all being here. Thanks for supporting my channel. And um, thanks for looking at me without my makeup on because uh, today's one of those days. <laughs> y'all have a good one. I'll see you soon. Bye.